Greetings YouTubers and followers of Apple Stump Bushcraft Stuff and Things. Today we're going to do a solid for a buddy who did a solid for us and load him up a few rounds of cowboy ammunition for his Marlin lever action 44 caliber rifle. The rifle shoots 44 Special or 44 Magnum or a combination of both and is uh, fairly fun to shoot a cowboy style rifle that takes us back to the late 19th century. What he had was some um, 44 specials that he was interested in in particular that had been shot. The cases are somewhere around 80 years old. They're balloon head cases and as such we don't want to load them to uh, high pressure with a modern powder. And we're not going to use black powder either. So what we're going to use is a powder called Trail Boss which is designed for cowboy action shooting. Here are the five cases that we're going to load and I'll try to demonstrate for you what a balloon head case looks like on the inside if the camera will cooperate. There. Can you see that? That's a balloon head style case. You can see that the center of it where the primer flash hole is is raised up like kind of in the shape of half a balloon. And I'll show you for reference what a case looks like that has a modern head on it. And here we have a modern solid head cartridge case, if I can bring it into focus. Notice the difference there, how flat that is, where the primer hole is. The web of a balloon head style case is much weaker than modern ones. The web being this area just ahead of the rim. And so they can't take as much pressure without blowing out the side walls. If there happens to be a slight cutout in the chamber or a slight area that's unsupported down here in the web of the case, just ahead of the rim, a balloon head style case can't take the kind of pressure that a solid web case can take. So again we'll show for comparison solid web. Notice that that area where the balloon is in the other case is all filled in with brass and it's a much stronger case. This one happens to be a 44 Magnum. But regardless of whether it was 44 Magnum or 44 Special, the case head is all built up and stronger. Uh, solid brass in there as compared to the much thinner web of the balloon head style case. So we're going to use another powder that's meant for cowboy action shooting. Instead of uh, a higher pressure powder, this particular powder by IMR is called Trail Boss and it is developed specifically for um, shooting cowboy action style or old rifles, low pressure loads and it gives a volume similar to what black powder gives in that it fills the case fuller closer to the base of the bullet. For the bullets we've chosen what he had originally loaded in those and that is these Silver Bullet Company 200 grain cast lead flat point bullets. You can see there's the there's the point right there, the nose of the bullet and it has one grease groove and a crimping groove. So we've got some of those and he likes uh, CCI primers so there we have some primers and here we have examples of those bullets what they look like when they're loaded. And this again is one of the Peters brand balloon head style cases. So what we're going to do first is take those five empties right there, toss them into the vibratory case tumbler for a few minutes and we'll get back to you and get started unloading them. So here we have our vibratory case tumbler. It's ready to go with corn cob ground up material. Here's our five cases and that doesn't seem like very much of a load to put in there but I have other brass inside of there that's going to serve as ballast to make sure that those bump against each other adequately enough to be polished. So we'll put the lid back on that 
tighten it down and turn it on. We'll give that a few minutes to brighten those up. Okay, that should be enough polishing. I'll take the locking screw off of there. Now what we do is use a sifter like this, similar to what gold panners use. And pour that into there. You can see the ballast that I have in here is a number of rifle cases. Way even a small number of cartridge cases that I want to polish. For instance, five today gets adequate exposure to the media, tumbling media, by knocking around with those. So here we have our five balloon head 44 special cases. Now we're going to put the powder in the powder measure hopper. Again, this is Trail Boss powder. It's a little different than most. It looks like, almost looks like little lifesavers or Cheerios. takes a lot of it to equal a normal charge weight. Okay, next thing we have to do is adjust that. We'll adjust the charge to what he wants, which is 6.2 grains of Trail Boss. So there's the scale right there. And we'll zoom in on it. Turn it on, let it warm up a little bit. And we're going to be using grains for our measure, unit of measure. Pan on there and tear it. Okay. So we'll let that warm up a minute. What I'm going to do is adjust this. I don't know if you can see that, but right there there's a, an adjustment screw that backs in or out um, a rod that creates an amount of space in this rotor and that space is occupied by powder and that's how you adjust the measurement. Turn that screw in or out to make the chamber that the powder falls into bigger or smaller. So again, what we're looking for is 6.2 grains, and I know that adjustment right there isn't going to be enough. So we're going to back that adjustment screw out quite a bit. It's trail Boss powder is very, very lightweight. So it tends to fill the volume of the case up like black powder would. That initial adjustment gave me 4.4 .4 grains, which is not nearly enough. So, 6.2 grains would be a charge which would probably come close to the base of the bullet when the bullet is properly seated. There we go, that's better. 8.7, so that's too much down some. When I get the right amount to where it's throwing the right amount, then we'll show you what it looks like in the pan on the scale. Give you a little close-up of the way the Trail Boss powder grains look. Look like little lifesavers, Cheerios or something. Little donuts. 
4.8. That's too little. We need 6.2. So we'll try that. As patterns go, trail bus doesn't meter all that consistently compared to some like 231 or WSF, some of the flattened ball powders that metered quite well. And that didn't throw any that time, I don't know why. Forming a powder bridge in there, I guess. And there the rest of it came out. So. Five point one. We want six point two. Now, because Trail Boss doesn't meter consistently and forms powder bridges inside the mechanism of the powder measure, I'm going to weigh each charge after it's thrown to make sure that I'm getting the right amount of powder in each case. That's six point two right there. The chances of it throwing too heavy of a charge are slim but the chances of it throwing too light of a charge are real and need to be taken into account. Put the cap back on there. Alright, there you can see the Trail Boss powder granules. You can see that they're circular with a hole down the middle. Almost like little lifesavers or Cheerios or something like that. They're very, very fluffy and lightweight. It takes a lot of them to make up uh, a certain grain weight. In this case, 6.2 grains. And there you can see this is 6.2, 6.3. That little difference could be caused just by air flowing over the pan. But 6.2 is close, 6.3 is fine. I'm sure he'll be happy with either. All right, now we're going to load the primer feed tube. We need five primers. Just happen to have five of them on this side of the box, so. There we go. This is what you call a primer flipper. It's going to flip them so that the anvil side is facing up. You notice the kind of gold side. Notice that the gold side of the primers is facing up. What we're going to do is put the lid on that, turn it over. Now all the silver sides will be facing up and we can pick them up with the pickup tube. You can see the pickup tube has a hole in the middle. Push it down over the primer and it picks it up. So we'll pick up all five of them. And then it has a follower. That's this little pin here right there. And we stick that down inside of there like so. And then we'll put it on the machine. I'm going to return to our powder scale for just a minute. For loads that are less than the true value that we want, I have a powder trickler here. And I can trickle individual, almost individual grains of powder into the pan to make the charge uh, more exactly what I want. So that's what this is and it's got some Trail Boss powder in it. You can see the powder hopper and measure and I have put the lid back on it. I'm going to put the connecting rod on it so that as the progressive press rotates one shell into a position to get a powder charge, this bar will raise that and drop the powder charge into the shell. As I mentioned before, I'm going to weigh each one because this particular powder doesn't meter terribly accurately through the RCBS meter. Well, here's the primer tube. It goes right there. Pull the cotter pin out and that drops the primers into position to be picked up by the transfer bar and seated. So here we have a case with, that, with a fired primer. Station 1 will resize and decap that case. This comes back, a primer goes into position, and that's seated the primer. So I'll show you. We now have a live primer in that case. And we'll take another one. 
then the same thing happens right there. With the third one, because there's no case in the powder drop position, I have to move the transfer bar over here a little bit so that it doesn't raise the lever. And seat the third live primer. This is the first time when we, when we lower the ram, or lower the handle and raise the ram, you'll see that this actuates and drops the powder charge. And this is where we need to weigh it and make sure that it's 6.2 or thereabouts. So I remove the case from the machine, I'm dumping it in the pan, and now it says 6.5, which is too much. So remember I said I was going to weigh each charge. So right now I'm dumping off a little powder into that trickler. I'm just doing it by pinch by hand right now. 6.2. All right, so we made that one 6.2. And we'll put that back in the bullet seating position. Put another empty case on the depriming and resizing position and we'll actuate the machine. And what we forgot to do is put a bullet on the bullet seating die. It might be too late for that, let's see. Yep. Those are the kinds of mistakes that I'm going to have to do a take two here, I'm afraid. Because I forgot a step, and that happens. What I needed to do was adjust the seating die so that it seats the bullets to the correct depth. So, I've got that raised up quite a bit right there. I'll take these two out. All of them have now been primed, so it's not an issue anymore. We'll raise that up in there to where it's crimping position, and I'm going to screw this screw down, which is the seater plug, and then make sure that the bullet is seated to the length that the shooter wants. So what I did is put a loaded one in there and use it for a template. So this is one of the original ones that he had left in his supply. So now I have to pull this one rather easy since I didn't seat it very well. We're going to have to use a bullet puller mallet. The kinetic bullet puller, one tap is all it takes. Now I need to recover the bullet and the powder out of that. These bullets are size 429, which is the correct diameter for a 44 Special 44 Magnum cartridge. However, most 44 Magnum and 44 Special bullets start off as either 430 or 431. 431 is typical of lead bullets. These bullets are designed for 44. 40 or 44 Winchester centerfire and not a 44 Magnum or 44 Special. However, they work quite well in 44 Special. And they're plenty good enough for this particular shooter's needs. So what I'm going to do is put another live primer on the station because so I have to resize that. And that will essentially kick out the primer that's in it and ruin it. So, decapping, priming, and since all these other cases have been primed, we have to be careful about not running them up in the sizing die again. Here's how we we'll work that. Expander. Now we put the new prime case in there so it doesn't get sized again. Expander. New case. 
now we're going to go up to the powder charging station and a new case in the expanding station and we'll weigh this powder charge and make sure it's 6.2 or thereabouts now this one is 6.5 so I've got to pinch some out of it and I pinched it down to 6.2 on that one. I'm going to just go ahead and put this previous one on there because this time it will be seated properly. And up we go. And there we have the finished bullet. And just for comparison, that's the one I just loaded. This is one of the ones he had left over, so it's virtually identical. Okay, now let's take this one that we just filled with powder, measure it. This one says 6.3. Take a little pinch off. 6.2. Put it back to the bullet seating station. And take one of the bullets, put it on there, raise it up, seat the bullet, charge the next case. Now remove the case, weigh the charge. That one came out at 6.2, just fine, right off the machine. And we'll weigh the next charge. This charge came out of 6.3, so we'll take just a little pinch off it. Six point two now. There's no way of knowing whether it's six point two three four or six point five or six point two five something. The little decimals can be off, but it rounds it to the nearest one so all right there's a fresh bullet now this transfer arm here actuator bar has slipped back into the neutral position if I raise the ram right now it will not throw a powder charge so I have to maneuver this little flange over here to catch it so now it will charge that last case and we'll weigh the last powder charge make sure it's in the ballpark and it came out at 6.2 so we had about three of them that came off the machine correctly and two that were too heavy not by much it's impossible with uh, normal operations to throw a double charge of trail boss powder it would overflow the case so that's one good thing about it with some other powders especially like 231, it's quite easy to maybe uh, misstep or forget where you're at in the process and throw a double charge into a case and if you fired that case in certain firearms you might have what we like to call a kaboom where the gun explodes and that can hurt you. Well, here we go, seating the bullet on the last one and here we have the final completed round of 44 special cowboy ammunition. That's how easy it is. I'm not going to load any more ammunition today so we're going to return the powder to its original container. And we have a special funnel for doing that. Again, here are the five completed rounds. 44 Special, 
I looked at them closely and they all look just like the rest of them in this box here. Cowboy ammunition. All right. There's the Trail Boss container, original container. I always put powder back in an original container so you don't get confused about what's in there. This is a special funnel. It's made for these big containers. So I'm unplugging or disconnecting the powder charge activator. I'm going to take the powder meter and hopper off the machine. Take the cap off. Hold this really steady and pour the powder back into its container. And then we're going to give it a couple extra wraps like that to get it clean inside. Get all the powder that might be adhering to the inside of the hopper out. Reconnect the arm by means of a cotter pin. That can almost, there we go, cut it. And we'll tighten it down to the powder drop tube and there we go. You can see some of those powder granules adhering to the cap here of the canister. See they look like little lifesavers or Cheerios. A little hole in the middle. Put the cap back on tightly and we will return this powder to storage at room temperature. Out here in the garage it's actually quite hot. And we'll, uh, we're done with this particular portion of the video. Again today we use the RCBS Rock Chucker, or Rock Chucker Press, that's the main press right there. And it has a piggyback 2 conversion unit on it. And that allows it to be a progressive press. I can, at a leisurely pace, I can load easily 200 rounds an hour on that press and if I move a little bit faster 300 so that makes it pretty good I used to shoot IPSC competition many years ago and that's when I got the press don't do that anymore but back then it wasn't unusual to shoot 500 to 1000 rounds a week in practice so I needed a press that I could load a lot on and that's what happened I bought that one so I've had that press almost 30 years if not 30 years and it's been quite a good press for me. So that's the end of this portion. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope it made some sense to you. By the time I get done editing it, it'll be much shorter. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.